Hey everyone, what's up? It's Gabriella Flores from soulexcelsior.com. Here we have the incredible and mystical, magical and powerful Miss Gracie Ray. Hello, Gracie. I'm so Hello. grateful that you are here. Thank Gracie. you. Thank you for having me. Oh, the honor is mine. Believe me. Um, Gracie Ray uh, is on this incredible documentary on Amazon available now. It's called Psychic Grace, and it is actually called Psychic, A Gift of Grace. And it's a documentary about Grace. Uh, where she decides to come out of the supernatural closet to unveil her gifts to the world. Now, I was completely blown away because I felt from the moment, first of all, you're very captivating. I don't know if you've been told that, but you have this absolutely captivating, uh, uh, beautiful, beautiful face. And, and then it's like, you're just like, oh yeah, here's my beauty. But now, welcome to my soul. And I was like, I'm drawn in. I love this. So um, thank you so much for being here. Tell me. You. Yeah. So you mentioned that you have a Catholic background. Yes. Um, very Catholic. Yes. Very, very Catholic. Um, mm -hmm. So I can just imagine what this was for you in terms of coming out of the supernatural closet and saying, hi, look, so the things that I've been receiving and the messages and all of this. So tell me a little bit about that process of what, what it took for you to finally say, that's it. It is time for me to step into my own greatness and, and start to um, be my authentic self. So it's a funny thing. <laughs> uh, it wasn't like I chose specifically like, okay, you know, here I go. I'm going to do this thing. It wasn't at all. It was, um, I had been living in LA and I, you know, growing up Catholic, I, I was raised in, um, basically like the Eastern LA part of, you know, uh, Pico Rivera. It's a very small, very Mexican community. So not only were, was I raised Catholic, I was raised very traditional, like Catholic. Right. So I went to Catholic school my whole life. It was a big deal. And, um, you know, so I later in life school, you know, I was like, I'm going to go be a lawyer. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It was hard enough to say, actually, the traditional path in life doesn't work for me. So I'm going to go and do artistic stuff like that. Was, that was like the beginning. Right. And my family was like, oh my God, like what's wrong with you? I'm like, no, please. And then they, they caught on and they were fine with it. So that worked out. So I actually, you know, after I graduated from, from college, from Loyola Marymount University, I, you know, began acting, began producing. And I was like, oh yeah, this is a side of myself where I can share my soul. And meanwhile, since early college on the DL, I was doing psychic greetings for people. I didn't even know what a psychic greeting was. I, I didn't know what it was. I just knew people would come to me and I would know things about them that I, I probably shouldn't have known. You know, it was like something was going on. And then at the time it was like after college and I was in this, this acting, you know, class or whatever. And it was just these little pieces were coming together. Like um, our acting coach or our teacher, I said something like, she's sick. There's something, there's something up. And there was nothing, no evidence. And turns out she had to have heart surgery. And there was, there was just all these things, right? So my, so my friends at the time in LA actors, they're all woo woo. They're all like new age, the secret, <laughs> let's do it. Right. So they were like, you're a psychic. This is what you are. And I'm like, I, <sighs> you know so I was like no no I'm, and then all of a sudden it kind of all um like we went to this guru and he was like if there's a head there's a tail if you're if you have these abilities if you have this gift someone needs it and I had been trying to help people but as that good girl I don't know good girl but as that Catholic you know <laughs> I, was, I was like I have to like you can't do this for work you can, there was all these limitations Right. And so basically that's kind of what I talked about and, you know, in the documentary and then I, I became a psychic working with one, listen.com. And so at that point it was like opening Pandora's box. 
And I was like, wow, you know, this is actually the best part of me. You know, it's not the face, it's not the acting, it's not the, this is actually the most beautiful part of me. So my brother lived in, and this is why it's so freaky because I've been binge watching all of your videos. My brother lived in Hoboken, New Jersey, which is basically New York City, right? Just like mm -hmm. across the water. Yeah. And him and I, he is an actor and a voiceover artist, and we were both kind of like just losing our our love for the industry. And so we were like, why don't we like do production company? So I moved out here and we were like, well, what do, what do we do? And I was like, oh, it'd be great to do a documentary on psychics. And he was like, yeah, like, no, like, I want to, people should know about the psychic world. I was like, yeah, just not about me. <laughs> just, just not about me. And we went through so many and we kept trying to like find something. And at the end of the day, um, my brother turns to me and he's like, well, what about you? And I was like, oh, hell no, 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 I just, that's like not for me. So when people watch the video and see me crying and see me being vulnerable, it's because it was that hard for me. It genuinely was. It was, I had already accepted this in myself, but there's some, there's a difference between in myself and then like really putting myself out there on every platform. And from that point, it was like, let's go we're in this you know right right and that that's first of all i so i did watch it for obviously the first time i was hooked and then i watched it um a second time yesterday and i was bawling like oh. i was literally crying because i was like the process that it takes to um it's like you know i always say that when we're born we go through this process of you know, earthly amnesia because the process of birth is so traumatic that it's like, you know, you're in this like little soft cocoon and then yes. you come out and then the first thing that you know that you get is like a slap on your ass to be like, mm -hmm. are you good? And you're like, right. you're like, what? I, I was in this like spiritual like state, like Zen with my mom. And like, all of a sudden now I'm out here and I have forgotten exactly what I was supposed to do. And then, so you go through this amnesia and then you go through these like these these soul contracts, right? Where you're like doing this and doing that, and and nothing makes sense. You're like, this can't just be it. I can't. This can't just be it. Like I know that there's something deep within myself, and it's the 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 soul you, right? That's like mm -hmm. I just like I, I've always known who I am, but I've just never had the courage because there's not a community um, of people. There's no right. like you know, um, the ones that are out there doing those things, sometimes they're, um, considered charlatans, you know, so oh, yeah. well, there are, then, definitely. yeah. And then, you know, you have all these other things that it's just, it's not considered mainstream. So when you're getting, or wasn't, and or maybe wasn't, it, right. Oh yes. Yes. And I love that we chose to be alive during this time. You oh, know, I know I same, same, yes. same, the age yeah. of the Aquarian. Um, I, so I got really interested in astrology and there is just kind of going off what you're talking about. There's lower level astrology. I call it basic bitch astrology, which yes. is fun. It's so fun. It's so like relatable, yes. but then there's esoteric astrology, which is what I study. And that really points us in the direction of our soul and enlightenment and, you know, living just your most fulfilled life. And so you know, um, at this time period that we're in, we're coming out of this Capricorn energy, which is just like, eh, like money and Weinstein and like, eh. and it's, it's good on certain levels of like, we need to get things done and we need to build. And on other levels, it's not, it's like the lower level of self, right? The ego. And so now we're basically like a lot of people have talked about the age of the Aquarian, but it's like, we're, we're just coming into it. And so you see the shift away from Hollywood, the shift away from the structures. And now it's like, no, we're giving the power back to the people and we're getting our voice back and we're, you know, Aquarians, they're so eccentric and so accepting. So, you know, and, and I've had people, you know, contact me. They're like, uh, I'm, I'm gay. And I was like, that's awesome. They're like, no, no, no. I wasn't out before. And then I saw your film and I was like, oh, like, 
killed me that, you know, it's, it was, I think it became not about being psychic, but about living your truth, you know, and then I was done, tears done, you know? Yes. And that's, that's what I personally loved about your, your documentary. First of all, I've always loved the esoteric and I've always loved, you know, um, just being able to connect with something bigger than ourselves that, you know, this whole idea of we're not alone, you know, um, even there's like earth angels, but there's also like celestial oh. team, you know, that's constantly can give you information and, and have you connect. So I've always been connected to that, but your documentary was truly, I found this courage, this courage to be yourself and whatever that means, you know, to you. And I thought it was just so incredible. Um, so I did take notes, obviously, because I was like, there was things that like stood out to me. Um, so you said you were always, you always had this strong desire for intimacy with God. Now, yeah. so I know that um, religion always tends to um, shun um, that type of, uh, you know, that type of um, gift. And, but it's so funny. If we were to, yeah. If we were to go into the Bible, um, there is a scripture that actually says that Jesus went and spoke to a woman before he spoke to a man and he came through, like the woman had a vision. It says that in the Bible. So sometimes I'm like, look, if we're really going to go there, right? Like, and I'm spiritual, I'm not religious, but right. if we're going to go there. Like it's there. If you're going to use this as an actual factual thing, there's a lot of those things. Like there's a lot of visions and they're like, yeah, but that was then. And I'm like, that's still applicable to the modern day because the divine lives within all of us. Right. And I just think that some of us are more um, available to that connection. And I think when you said I have a, I always had a strong desire for intimacy with God. Um, uh, you also said um, you call God grace. And I was like, bawling because I was like really? yeah I was just yeah. like because you 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 were so so vulnerable about um when... you're making me cry all over again I'm sorry no but it's like because it was it was intimate it was it was exactly what I was looking for all this time yeah. you know and that doesn't I think that instinct doesn't come from well my life is just perfect and I want that intimacy with God no it comes from this sucks. This is like really painful. And my only hope is that there's a God out there. Like that was the only thing I had, you know, and, and I'm grateful to my family for giving me Catholicism and an understanding of God because I needed a higher power. I absolutely needed a higher power and I needed it to not be human and to be able to move mountains, you know? And so when I literally like I was on the bathroom floor and I was just like, I need something. And to audibly hear, you can call me Grace. It was like my, like all of it suddenly was put into perspective of like, oh, everything's about to change, you know? And it was like, you know, it's just <laughs> that thing after 20 some years of just feeling so alone, like something broke and you could feel it break, if that makes sense. And Absolutely. It's like that coming to yourself moment where it's like, I've always been here, right. um, but you've, you've turned your back on me. And then finally you're at that point where you're like, I can't do this human thing anymore. Like yeah. I'm a spirit, right? That quote that says I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. Like Right. You get to that point where you're like, okay, I can't do this. Like something's got to give. And I love that you heard, you can call me Grace. I and, absolutely love that. And I love that you say coming home to yourself because, you know, I call a lot, um, <laughs> after the documentary girl, I have the new agers, I have the Catholics, like you don't know what spirits you're channeling, la, la, la. like come home to us. You can be a prophet for us. And, you know, just kind of say no to all of the psychic stuff. So I'm like, I'm get, I get it. I get Deuteronomy. I get why you're afraid of this. But if you want to go biblical, you've chosen the wrong girl. Cause I've been in Catholic school my entire life. Yeah. Okay. They casted lots, you know, they literally, it's like, oh, tarot cards are evil. Oh, but casting lots is okay. It's like, okay, listen, Pharisees, let's just calm down for a second. <laughs> okay. Live your life and you do it in your own truth, right? All of us need to. 
to some degree, you know, whatever that is. I have, my brother is hardcore Catholic, you know, and he's so dedicated to that. I work with a lot of people that are very Catholic and I say, yes, you know, like if that's your, if that's what empowers you and brings you to God, amazing, awesome, or whatever your higher power is. Right. Um, so that's not my thing. Like, I'm like, I'm a spiritual, not a religious person, but, um, I just love the idea of coming home to yourself because that's what I needed. I needed something unique and personal and I had spent so much time looking outside of myself that I didn't even know how to look inside. I don't know. I was like, whoa, you know? And so it really did, you know, it's like, oh my God, it's just, I could say so much about it, but I'm just like talking over you. So I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I, I love that. Um, because that's, I believe that's the key in really finding yourself. So, um, since you were so open about, you know, everything, what do you think, um, you mentioned, you mentioned about shame and then you mentioned yeah. about these groups that come to you and say, no, 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 come here. So that's another thing, right? Like you were able to finally tune into yourself. You were able to tune into your higher power. You were able to finally say, look, I'm going to accept and embrace the parts of me that aren't considered, you know, what other people would say it's okay. And I'm just going to say, look, I'm going to unconditionally love those parts. And I'm mm -hmm. going to parent that part of me and be like, no, it's okay. I, 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 this is who I am. And I'm totally ready to, to put God, you said I put God first. And then Absolutely. so when you're dealing with these certain groups, right? Yeah. It's, you're, you, you're more prone to shame right? Because there is that sense of shame, like maybe they're right, but I do know myself, but you know, um, and you mentioned shame prevents you from seeking opportunities. I also loved what you said in the documentary you said, uh, shame, uh, stops you from reconnecting to your miracle. I was like, yes, it is so true. It is so true. So you said, um, cause I actually quoted you. We can't yeah, no, I yeah, I did. I quoted you. It says, we can live our lives solely depending on ourselves, or we will continue to outlive the same story over and over again. Asking yeah. for help is evolution. That's what helps us to outgrow our ideas and our belief systems. So I was just like, uh, amazing, right? Like absolutely incredible. I love that you said asking for help is evolution because we live in such a modern day society where it's like, put on a strong face, yep. put your mask on, you're tough, you know, um, can't let anything get to you. So tell me what, how through finally allowing and accepting and embracing yourself and being like, all right, let's go, let's do this, this amazing journey, right? Let's go on this path. Tell me, how do you find the inner strength? Because now you found the inner voice, but now do you, how do you find the inner strength to be unfuckwithable. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh, this, yeah. uh, I think you'll, I had this instinct from the beginning of like, no, what I am is not evil. The shame and the belittlement and the criticism and the judgment, that's evil. That's bad. You know, that kills the soul. And so you see it, it's like, you know, I think, um, what I love about, this work is I read people's energy or I read what vibe they're putting out versus what they're saying. Because when you have someone who is criticizing, shaming, telling you that you're wrong, um, you know, that refuses to validate your feelings, you know, gaslighting you, it's like, okay, well, those are the same characteristics of an abuser. So what's going on here? Like, I'm not your slave. Okay. So I don't work for you. I have the light inside of me. So I feel like the first step in the process, and I just like posted something about this on Instagram, I think the other day is at least 50% of the work needs to be clearing, you know, clearing away the shame because the courage is already there. It's just, you can't go up the mountain with all that baggage, you know? So for me, 
in that situation, it was, you know, just like putting myself out there. I had to get rid of things and I never had to adopt courage or adopt power. It was there. I just had all of these outside influences keeping me in bondage. So I needed to get rid of that first. Yeah. Yeah. And you, I guess another way of saying that, because I know that sounds just like energy, blah, blah, but it's like, it's trauma. It's trauma. It's like trauma and programming and conditioning and shame and all of these things that we've internalized that is literally keeping us stuck. Absolutely. So you're, that is, that's really, really inspiring um, that you were able to, you know, just say, okay, this is not that. I am, it's basically saying like, you're not co-signing on any of this pain that was done to you. You're not yeah. saying, you're just saying like, look, I don't want to be the owner of this stuff anymore. Yeah. Like decluttering, right? A Marie yeah. Kondo of like pain. Like, let's just right. get rid of all these things that no longer serve me. So, and seeing it for what it is. Yeah. So once you did that, you said you were able to, that, that gave you even more strength. Now. Yeah. It allowed my strength to be seen. And then once it was like, once I was vulnerable, I was like, oh no, this is a power. This is not a weakness. This is not, oh, the place that people are going to zoom in on and hurt. No, this is like, Rah! it was like, I left the fire out, you know, <laughs> and, it just, uh, and it's been amazing ever since. So, you know, like for instance, the, the man that contacted me and he said he was gay and that he was closeted yeah. and then had the strength and I was like if you were my son and this is what I told the man I would love you for your truth and if your truth is that you're gay I would love that like I would help you find a boyfriend you know like it would be oh. so fun <laughs> and he was like tell me so much. and it's like yeah because like I, it's just it's your truth and when you're sharing your truth with someone you're sharing your soul and only people that are hurt and have been hurt and are living a lie cannot appreciate that, you know? And so, you know, I don't, I don't feel hurt when people do stuff like that or say things like that, which is really kind of gone now um, because I know the value in loving people. And that's what my mom told me. She said, it's not our job to criticize people or to put them down. It's our job to be tolerant. That's what Jesus said. So don't listen to the Pharisees, the, the structures, the churches, if they're telling you something, did Jesus say it? Did he, you know, that's, that's kind of how she was. And you know, she's not wrong. You know, um, she must be very proud of you. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, she, I think she thinks this is all like crazy, but you know, it's because like, it's, 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 of course it is because it's new, right? Even of like, course. They always say that even like the Steve Jobs of the world, you know, they were always considered like way, way ahead of their time. And right. then it, it all made sense. So I think right. everything is going to like, you're already on that path where you're like, it's my intuition. My intuition's my map. It's my energy oh. PS, you know? So you know where you're going and it's not supposed to make sense to others. So yeah, absolutely. Awesome. absolutely. So and look at the fruit, look at the fruit of the tree. That's what Jesus said. So, so many times, like my brother, oh God, the other day, he's like, oh, how do you know, like, if you're doing energy work, what spirits are coming in? I'm like, well, since my head's not spinning around and I'm not like puking up pea soup, I think I'm good. Like, I said, Brian, like a gift of spirit of your spiritual connection to the spirit realm, your guides, whatever it is, your higher power, whatever, is discernment. You, I'm not even, okay, so we did this other documentary, which is like going to be coming out in 2020, and we went to a haunted house, and it was like demons, and it was scary. It's like a horror, horror documentary, and Ooh, that nice. was like, yeah, it was, it was quite, he's a, he's a paranormal expert too. That was like his back Very end. Of, cool. Yeah, so, but I'm like, well, I don't know. Like, I think it's pretty obvious in a house like that when you're being attacked, what's going on versus when you're, you know, working with spirit and good things are happening. Like, aren't these kind of obvious things? Like, look at the fruit, look at the fruit of the tree. If it's bad, then it's bad. If it's good, it's good. You know, that's just kind of like a simplistic thing that I have in my back pocket. So, 
you know. Yeah, I like how you put that very, you just like simplified it on such like what feels good, what looks good. Um, but you're right, that is discernment. Um, and a lot of people, I think, have hesitations because um, especially uh, with the work that I do, people don't yeah. know how to even discern their ego versus their intuition. They're like, my intuition totally was lying to me. And I'm like, then it wasn't your intuition. It was your ego, you know? Exactly. Like, I don't know the difference. So, um, so yeah, I guess with what you're saying, you know, um, you have to have that level of discernment. So what do you, um, cause I know this is already a gift. And when you're gifted on that level, you know, you know what makes sense to you and it comes easy to you. Um, but do you have any, um, any tools in terms of like how people can step into their own psychic abilities? Do you feel like it's, it's only certain people are, are psychic or do you feel like the collective does have the tools to be psychic, but sometimes they are scared, fearful of those, you know, bad energies, if you will, you know, the scary ones. Okay. So this is what I'm like, not supposed to say, but I think everyone's psychic. I guess. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. So but I mean, that's just my truth. I just think that I've worked really hard to tune it and you know, other people, they go to jobs every single day. They have 10 hours of work. They want to come home and watch Netflix. They don't want to like, okay, let's sit down and see what the guides have to say. You know, it's like, that's my job. My job is to sit here and to learn as much as I can and to be tuned in so I can be here for you, you know, but I hope to connect people with spirit. I don't want to be any, like, I don't want to make anyone dependent on me or to feel like, well, you know, there's no connection with spirit except for grace or a psychic or what no you are connected I'm only here to like provide more information or when you're stuck when you're blocked you know when you need just a little bit of perspective on things like absolutely but I think we all have intuition absolutely I mean we do it's of just course yeah fortifying it is where people are lacking Right. And then there is such a difference between being a psychic and a medium, right? Because a psychic is like when you're your intuition, but a medium is someone who can channel the wonderful uh, people behind the incredible thin veil that a lot right. of people don't realize how thin it is, right? So oh, yeah. you're also a medium, right? You talked right. about it in your documentary and I loved it when you were saying about um, you thought you had a rich nanny. And you were like, yeah, right, was, yeah. yeah. And I was like, I, I was watching and I was like, oh, okay. She had someone that was babysitting. And then when it turned out that it was like, you, uh, it was your, uh, uh, your late relative, right. But that you didn't, you've never met. So why don't you tell us a little bit about your right. relationship? Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't know that I was a medium until one day this girl was talking about her dad and I was like, yeah, he had an accent. Blah, blah. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I'm, oh, okay, I guess this is a thing, you know, but as a kid, I did, I had this, you know, I was maybe, and I remember being like two, three years old, and I know, I know that's not something that a lot of people do, but I have very specific memories, and so I remember I was in bed, and my, like, nanny lady would be there, and she'd be in the rocking chair, and so from my perspective, this was 100% a person. This was not it was like mom, nanny, you know, so here I thought I had a nanny, you know, taking care of <laughs> and um, it wasn't until like years later, I was still talking about my, my nanny, and they were like, okay, like, <laughs> orphan Annie, what's going on here, you know, I was like, you didn't have a nanny, and I was like, yes, I did, I blah, 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 and then it ended up being, you know, my father's grandmother, and I was able to describe her, yeah. and then he correlated it with a photo, and I was like, okay, this is this, but I will say I had night terror for like four years as a kid. And my mom took me to a shrink and he was like, she's over imaginative. And the thing was, is what I was seeing it, it sometimes it was dreams and it was nightmares. But to this day, I see things and I'm like, great, now it's the sixth sense, but like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. but I, like, I don't see dead people, but, um, I, I definitely see things, you know, I, I can see things not just with my mind's eye, but it's actually the more I go into this, I get to like physically see things. So kind of cool. I don't know. It's, 
I cool think so. Scary. And like sometimes when I'm talking about, you know, spiritual stuff, my brother will say there's like orbs all around you. So yeah. other people are seeing it too. And then that was what I got curious about. I said, well, if I have these abilities, can I like project it? And that's been this year is opening up that door. Oh, I love that. So you're still, it's like you're walking in this, um, like this doorway where you're opening this door and then you're opening another door and another door. And so you're just going in. And by the way, that takes a lot of courage because once you go on this path, yeah, you know, once you go on the path, it's kind of like, I'm going to do it completely and fully do it, or I'm going to only like dip my toe in and you right. can't. You really can. You have to fully invest into it. So I wanted to thank you for that courage because I know that it takes a lot to do that, especially with like people that just don't believe, you know, because they don't know, they never experienced it. And I find that that seems to be the ongoing thing when you don't experience something, you can't understand it. So you label it. Um, but, um, well, thank you. Oh, well, thank you. You're doing it. <laughs> and you're bringing people to the forefront you know, that do it, yes, you know, yes. so. I do feel like it's very, very important because I do feel that we all have our own gifts. We all, whatever that may be, right? Um, and I think it's very important to just have that courage and to just be like, you know what? This is my life. I came here. If I'm remembering things about myself and then I'm still learning things about myself, I'm like, yes, the process of self-discovery. And there's no, like, every, every self has to be the same. It has to just be uniquely you. That's why you're here. That's why you're, you know, that's, that's really what ultimately why we're all here. It's we all had some soul contract that we galactically decided and mm -hmm. we're like, here. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's sign up to all these lessons and all these things. And all of a sudden it's like, really, what was I smoking when I was up there? Well, <laughs> can, can I go into that a little, a little bit? I'm a little, okay. So I don't, um, so, you know, obviously the, the esoteric astrology has been a big part of my life as well, but I'm very much like, I'm a Virgo. I don't know if you know what that means. Um, mm -hmm. but I'm like, grounded show yeah. me you know and so esoteric astrology when you're talking about the soul contract i'll be like doo, 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 and i'll say okay this is your soul contract yes and i love that where i could actually show people here's your birth chart this is who you are and they're like oh, you know so <laughs> i was going to ask you do do you know your um well what's your sun sign okay so i am a libra oh so is my brother okay yes yes so yeah. And I have my, like, my, uh, my chart is like, it's hilarious. Cause it's like, um, even people they'll tell me, they'll be like, either they think I am, or they think I'm not a Libra. Um, well, what's your rising? A Sagittarius. Okay. Yeah. I thought so. I thought so. Oh, okay. <laughs> so your rising sign, you know how the sun comes up over the horizon? Yes. But you can't see the sun yet? Yeah. That is your soul. So your Aww. soul is a Sagittarius, and I can tell you about that if you're interested. I am. <laughs> and then as a Libra, that's the path that you take in this life. Wow. Um, and, and the difference between, like, basic bitch, which is so fun. I love me some basic <laughs> bitch astrology. But, like, for instance, you know, Libra on a lower level, it's relationships. It's every lower level has domination. But Libras are like, I'm going to charm you. <laughs> I could emotionally control you. I know because I call my brother out on it. And my mom's a Libra. And I'm always oh, like. Oh, wow. So you're yeah. surrounded by them. <laughs> yeah. I love them because I guess maybe I have a pretty strong personality. And they like balance me out. And there's so many yeah. benefits to that. But, you know, on a lower level, it's ruled by Venus, right? So it's like love and like denial and like, you know, it has a little bit of lower stuff. But on a higher level, it's ruled by Uranus which is like, boom, like getting shit done. Yes. You know? And totally. what's the truth? It just, it's such a different energy, but your soul, and that's the path that you take. So, you know, that has its own thing to it, but really what you're here to fulfill more than that is your soul. And so your soul as a Sagittarius, happy birthday. We're in the season of the Sagittarius. <laughs> but what I love about Sagittarius is like, when we look at the Zodiac wheel, we have Scorpio. They have to go through Hades, like the black of the black, and die 
and they rise out like a phoenix on the rise right and that's actually sagittarius you are the phoenix on the rise right. you know in all your fiery glory and on a lower level it could be not grounded and it's like i want to do this 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 and everything so yeah. they might call me and be like what do i do and i'm like well let's first get you grounded because that's what sagittarians need you're like, like speaking it. to my soul like yes. I constantly that is like that is yeah. like, yes, 100%. And that's the thing. Yeah. And that's like, you know, you could, we can look at your birth chart and I can tell you, this is the guys that you like. And whenever we see that, it's not like, this is what you like, but you're never going to get it. It's like, no, this is what you're going to get because that's what your soul wants, period. Wow. Period. So my, like my fourth house of like daddy, right? And I'm into guys. So it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, well and, but I mean, if it was someone who was into women, we might right. want to look at their women, right. you know, like their 10th house. Yes. So for daddy, it's Sagittarius. So I like me a Drogo. I like me a man on a horse, you know. Girl, sort of, yes, honey. Yes. Like a big old, like, like, you know, just, <laughs> yes. And then the fifth house has to do with sex and then the relationship. So it's like, literally, I can look at someone's chart when they're flipping out and they're just like, I don't know, never to be in love, which a lot of Libras kind of have that moment. Yeah. And <laughs> which, by the way, Libras are best in relationships later in life. Like that's where they find their soulmate, their, you know, it's just like, oh. um, but they have to find themselves first, yeah. you know? So, um, so yeah, I just, it just, it's so fun to me to be able to like do that. And that's okay. why I want to like teach people about all of this. Cause it's so fun. You need to, you need to, because there's so many people, especially now with like, I love how you said about the basic bitch astrology and then the other astrology, like that is hands down what needs to be more put out there, you know? Yeah. So do you because find you with, can, you can <laughs> manifest mm -hmm. from the ego and you can do that for the next you know, but I, like, I almost feel like God put me here to expedite things for people, you know, just to kind of cut through the bullshit a little bit yes. to be like, look, like, let's get you what you really want. I'm, I'm like fairy godmother here to support you, you know, so. Yay, fairy godmother. Let's do it, you know, let's yes. do it, Patchy. Let's get you the mystical platform you want, you know. Yes, yes, totally. I love, love, love that. So tell me, okay, so now that I've got an idea of like this background of astrology, um, do you find, um, have you ever heard of something called Rosicrucianism? where it's like, so it's like, it's another, I guess, uh, way of life. Um, you know, it's like, I guess a philosophy in a sense. And basically they believe that, uh, w especially with your birthday, uh, there are specific times where you shouldn't be doing like deals. Um, and then there's specific. Oh, right. Like Mercury retrograde. And, kind yeah. of like that, but like it goes a little bit more in depth with specifically to your birth chart. So I was curious if you, if you had any. I guess I'm more about fortifying and developing someone's self-awareness and their ability to manifest because then it's like, let's do this. Let's live our best lives. Like I, you know what I mean? So, so yeah, I mean, there's predictive astrology, like I could look at financial numbers and make it happen, or I could build a successful and fulfilling career. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, so I guess I'm just more the, I'm the Virgo, I'm the self-development. Grounded, yeah, you need that earthly groundedness. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so my question to you is, what do you want to see more of in this world? Oh my gosh. I just want to, you know, I want to see more people empowered. That's, that's it. it. That's, that's incredible. <laughs> that's it. Just want to see people empowered. Um, you know, I think, mm -hmm. I think we've, we, um, a lot of people say, oh, well, we've lost our power. I'm like, I don't know if we ever had it. You know, I think we've had glimpses, but this is like, I really see the top being pulled off right now. So people like yourself, myself, you know, and it's not just about spirituality or mysticism. It's about being you, like you came here to be you. So why be someone else? Absolutely. Um, do you feel like with, you mentioned about trauma before and like, right. 
these emotional things. Do you feel that that often, um, that's also kind of that blinds us from our true self? Uh, so I, when I say that I did trauma work, like, like I said, I mean, life was not easy and I don't think any of us go through life unscathed. Right. So we all get pushed into certain directions. It's not always by choice. Right. Um, and so when, I mean, I have to do a lot of trauma work. I'm, I continue to do trauma work and then, you know, I don't do this in a public or career way, but I, you know, took, I assist other people in trauma healing. And when we're talking about trauma healing, I'm talking about like, victims of sexual abuse, victims of family, alcoholism, you know, I'm talking, mm -hmm. and that really, what that was what I needed to learn to understand the spirit realm. Like I needed a blueprint. And so when I started to see the toxic behaviors of abusers and, you know, childhood abuse and what that creates, now I can't unsee that, you know, it's like, I see it everywhere and I see it on a molecular level. So even when, you know, there's this, oh gosh, I don't know his name, but he said something on, it's like this Instagram influencer and he deals with trauma and he's like, you can never raise your vibration if you've had PTSD and trauma because you have to survive in this world and you will always be knocked down. He uh, couldn't have said it more you know, amazingly, more gracefully, because it's true, you know, so I, after all of this healing, and everything that it took me to get to a place of acceptance in myself, I, I, it was Pandora's box of, like, so many people are so hurt, and they're not a-holes, they're not selfish, they're not greedy, they're hurt, you know, they haven't had, they were never given what they needed, you know, so it's like, let's, let's clean it all up, let's get rid of it, and let's really rise up into our power, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, was I mean, I'm preaching to the choir. <laughs> yes, of course, of course, of course. You know, um, I, um, so you, you said that you, you wanna see more of empowerment in this world. So um, I've been, unfortunately, I've been seeing a lot of like different, and I don't want to put male on the spot because I love my men. I do. I'm a big, I'm very, very about it. But um, there have been a lot of male teachers that unfortunately things have been coming out. I saw this, this documentary yesterday, Bikram Yoga. Um, uh, oh, Jesus. Okay. Yes. It was about yogi, guru, predator. And I watched oh, yeah. it. I watched it and you know, um, and, and the way that, um, and it just, it upset me because I was like, yes. these are just people trying to get healthy, right? It's not like they're like, all right, I'm going to do this other path. It's like, they're actually right. trying to connect with their higher selves. They're trying to better themselves. And then here's a teacher that is obviously very controversial in its teachings. Um, and I do feel like that's his purpose. Um, but he still continues to teach, even though these people have come out and said that they're, you know, that he's done, you know, all these um, assaults, uh, sexual assaults and rapes. So I find myself becoming more and more like, okay, because I don't hear about women doing this. The most you hear about a woman is, oh, she's a bitch, right? Like, oh, she's this. Okay, you know what? All right, so she's got an attitude. All right, you know, whatever. But you never hear about a woman teacher or very rarely, I should say, um, a woman teacher using the vulnerabilities of someone who is trying to heal themselves, right? That they're on a healing, healthy path. So how does that make you feel as a woman who is like, obviously um, a guide, right? You're, you know, I, we've talked, we said this before, like you're many different things, but at the end of the day, you're here to, um, you're here to walk this path of what, of your mission your mission to help others in that way of, of providing them insight and, and guidance. And how does that make you feel as a woman to feel that, um, that someone could judge you because right. um, someone could judge you about your gifts because they did go through that path and they put their trust in someone and this person, um, 
Well, unfortunately, I was first a man before a teacher, right? Um, you know, there needs- Well, not even a man. I wouldn't call that a man. Right, right, exactly. Okay, so <laughs> that's some bullshit. I'm just yes. gonna call it how it is. Cause Absolutely. like, I come from this place of dealing with people and trauma and it's like, or even, okay, so this is what it looks like. It's like, okay, so say you have someone that was traumatized by someone. Well, then you have a spiritual teacher who's really a charlatan of sorts. You know, it's like, how much have you actually put into this? What is your education? How many people have you worked with? What are you doing with your time? Are you coming at it from an ego perspective of like, I, and we all see these people, they sit on their throne and they're like, I am the great Bikram yoga guy or whatever the hell. And it's like, you're just a human being. You're just a human being. And if you don't see that, I don't want to learn from you. Like, I don't know. So, you know, it's like the first wave of new agers um, were a lot of bullshit con artists. I'm just going to call it what it is. It's bullshit and you're hurting people. And so, for instance, I have people that come along and they're like, oh, I was, uh, you know, I was abused recently by my partner and I cut the cords. I said, how did you cut the cords? Tell literally, let's spell it out. I, oh, well, I sent him away, love and light. You sent an abuser love and light and he came back to get you? My goodness, like, how could it be? And it's not because she's dumb or stupid or whatever. It's because she's trying to be a good person and she's trying to heal. And these bullshit spiritualists are coming along, telling her something that's putting her in a position to be a slave, which is what we all are. And we've been. So break the chains. You send him back everything that he gave you. That's what you send him back. And you close that door once and for all. And honestly, it just, it makes me angry in a way that I should be angry because no one has been angry for these women and men that have been abused. So yeah, I'll say, I'll say I'm angry. I'll say it's bullshit. I'll say I'm going to stand up to you because that's how you need to be with bullies. People need to be held accountable. It's absolute bullshit. That should have never happened and it should never happen again. Like period. And I deal with, or I've, uh, not that I deal with, like I genuinely love to work with people that have come from situations like that because so many times it's patterns, right? It's like, I was abused and I'm 30 something years old, but my entire life I've been oppressed by men. And it's like, those aren't men. You know, my, my brother, he's, a, I don't know if he's home. He's in the next room. He's a man. He's a man. He is a man. He has never touched a woman inappropriate, inappropriately. He's like, he's like the biggest feminist I know. He's like, <laughs> women. He's like, I just want to serve you. You guys are amazing. You know, he just, he's we're like, goddesses of the universe and that men are like pigs. And I don't believe that. I, when I see a man in his true power, not his ego, because I think the difference between male and female sexuality is like, why do men go to like war? Well, back in the day, and then they like go rape all the women. It's like, it's a power thing. It's not, it's like their sexuality is intertwined with their sense of power, you know, and you see these abusers doing it. It's like, they don't necessarily want to like have sex with someone they just want to dominate them you know and so i think anyone who abuses anyone needs to be held accountable or else it's never going to change period like off to prison off to wherever you need to pay period you know amen, amen. um oh, i think i just heard him come through <laughs> he's like what he's like, you talking about me <laughs> like, yeah tell me more he's so funny i'll have him on my radio show and he's like my fans, they're going to miss me and blah, blah, blah. So <laughs> Lee, charming. Yeah, character. charming. That's what it is. I love that. Yeah. And I love that um, what you're saying about being held accountable because um, there's also a lot of, you know, there's still a lot of misconceptions out there that, you know, oh, women are lying or women are just a witch hunt. I always love when they say that. And I'm like, because they're trying to speak their truth. And it's like, well, why didn't they say anything to begin with? Well, when you deal with a really traumatic thing, let, maybe you'll be so logical. Maybe there won't be any emotion tied to something traumatic. Like people forget that there is yeah. a process in trauma and it doesn't, it's not like you pinched me. How I'm going to pinch you back. It's like, there's a process, especially when you're, when it's, unexpected right it's right. like and 
right? And depending on their past, because women, you know, not just women, but anyone who has PTSD, when they experience it again, they've lost their voice because no one stood up for them because they didn't have it to begin with. So I know because I've had a lot of sexual abuse that when I had someone come at me once again, I physically lost the ability to stand up for myself. You know, it was like shut down. The psyche is like, oh, this is happening again. Shut it down. And so, oh, you know, and I know that that's not what women want to happen. I know that's not what men want to happen in a situation like that. We all want to be brave and this and that. Um, you don't have to be brave because they're, it's their bad behavior. It's not yours. That should have never happened to you, period. You know, and in, abuse is abuse. You know, I, I, I'm sure you see it a lot too. It's like whether it's sexual, religious, physical, emotional, it has all the same characteristics. So when people, you know, say something negative about my spirituality, no, that's not going to happen any longer because that's on you. Those are your beliefs. I'm not taking it in. I'm not going to like cower and like, oh, I'm sorry. Like I did something wrong because I didn't. So that's on you. So it's, it's going to take a lot of healing, but because women have been so abused forever, you know, it's going to take our healing to change the world not our you know okay let's go like put on some high heels and stuff on men's balls like that's not going to do it you know <laughs> we need justice right we need cleansing here you know so i mean if that's your thing go do it but like you know don't <laughs> like us dominating men isn't yeah. going to help it you know Absolutely. we gotta we have to find healing and i see so many men who they have their stuff too, you know, I've, it's, yeah, it's amazing to be in a place now after all of the work where I'm like, man, like men want to love me. What is this? This is, this is so new, you know, but every woman deserves that. You deserve that. You deserve to have a love <laughs> that shatters, you know, every expectation you've ever had. Amen. I'll, I, I'm ready to receive that. I'm totally receiving mode of that. Yeah. Um, okay. and, and by the way, I can see that in people's bodies. Uh -huh. You know, we can see what's blocked. And it's interesting, you know, since I've- Yeah, what are you picking up? Are you picking up any energies? Are you picking up vibes? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, <laughs> do you mind me, like, saying anything? Yeah, or? go. No, break. let's, let listen. This is a, this is, I, I did want this to be so raw and authentic, so. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I know it's, it's not always easy, but I think you'll, you'll help a lot of people by being so vulnerable, but I will, but I'm always respectful. I, yeah. I've never- you know, I'm never like a hard person when it comes to reading so a it. sense of heartache and disappointment in people uh -huh. and not a strong masculine balance, which tells me you were let down by a lot of men. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Childhood. Yeah. But it's interesting because, you know, um, in astrology, right, it, um, the seven sacred chakras, which I'm not really a chakra person besides being able to read someone's energy, right? but it correlates to the seven sacred planets. So I can use the planets and the energy of the planets, which are literally like circling, like huge energy things in the universe, which correlates to these huge circling energy sources inside of ourselves. We could actually use those to our betterment and to heal us, to let things go. Cause sometimes you just need to rebalance it, you know? And so that's why I say, let's let go of things. Yes. You know, that don't belong <laughs> to you send it back to the sender let them deal with it because they gave it to you and and you know i i don't care if like this isn't you but you know some women yeah. are us too for 10 years i'm like girl energetically i'll we'll get you back to snow white you don't have to worry about that <laughs> you don't have to worry about that it's always <laughs> home to you right, you can right. always come home to you you know right. and from that place like can you imagine if the Bikram guy was like you know what that was so wrong of me I owe these women 
like I'm going to do everything in my power to fix this and to take a step back and to change who I am and what I've done. And I'm so sorry. We would all be like, Ooh, you know, like if he really did that, that would mean so much. And so I think that's what it's going to take. But sometimes the accountability needs to be there first. Right. Do you think it also has something to do with how these men are sort of like, I just feel like there's always just yeah. these roles to serve men. So I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, well, you know, in, in the historic, yeah, no. in the historical, <laughs> part, you're like, As I, like literally putting something in my mouth. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, girl, I think here's the thing. Like we want to feel like women a lot of the time. Like I've had moments where I was like, am I a dominatrix? Like what's going on? But so many of us <laughs> <laughs> really because I literally boss people around all day kind of being right. like this is what you're gonna do okay right. like this is what we're gonna do right and I'm like well where's my femininity like where did that go and yeah. um and the thing is is like we want I I would say overall this is obviously generalization but like we want to be women we want to feel like women yes serve daddy like we do but yes. you need to for us to be able to be in that position okay you need to earn our trust you need to give us respect you need to give us love and there needs to be equal balance because every single person whether you're mass or whether you're male or female is made up of masculine and feminine energy every single one of us you know so do I want to feel like a woman yes but not until I'm with someone who is deserving of that Wow. Okay. I just had a huge like aha moment. So you're saying like, in a sense, like we tend to be more in our masculine side till we feel like that man shows up within his um, healthy masculine energy yeah. and then we can step into our healthy feminine. Yes. Oh my goodness. That is huge. It's, it's like, excuse me, like you are this like sacred person and every sexual encounter, every physical, emotional encounter that you have with someone, you take on that energy. We're sponges. You know, even as little kids, they say, oh, little kids, they're sponges. We're still, we're still sponges. We're still sponges. We take it all in. We internalize it all. So if you're with Joe, like, bitch boy over here, like he's gonna like, you, how are you supposed to be like a woman and like open? And I just think of the sun and the moon. I think that's a really great, like this guy brings all this like fire explosion energy and you're like, I love you. And you know, it's just like, oh, it's so cute. I think, you know, and it can be so innocent and so healing, but you know, and, and I always tell people, imagine it like a mason jar. If you really want to attract that soulmate into your life imagine like this is a mason jar this is you you want to put not into someone else but put into you everything you want so if you want healthy femininity let's like work on that you know if you want healthy balance if you want a strong man you know okay but you can be it's just like we're so uh, thrown off our game you know, because we don't, we don't have a strong sense of who we are. So how could we make healthy, good decisions about who to be with, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. You're amazing, by the way. You're amazing. <laughs> and you have such a, like, beautiful Gabriella, like, oh, oh my gosh, like, like, princess goddess, like, <laughs> like, literally out of a Disney fairy tale. And you, <laughs> like, prince who like comes in and he's like a little intimidating. We're like, oh, don't hurt me. He's like, I never would. I'd only defend your honor, you know? <laughs> You're so funny. You're absolutely so funny. I, I'm, I will receive that. I received that. Yes, right. so, yes. Um, do you, uh, before we finish, do you want to tell um, anything to the viewers, something about you? Because I know that I have a lot of clients we touched on a lot of different things. Right. right. This is awesome. Um, but is there anything you want to add to someone that like is like, oh my God, I love her energy. I want to reach out to her. I want to get a reading from her. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to add or maybe even something that you wanted to add about just your mission um, or something that you want to inspire someone? 
Yeah, I mean, in terms of my mission, I mean, when I did the documentary, it was about obliterating shame. But as I've developed and gone along, I just want people to live their best life. I, I want it to be a magical life. And you can have that. So that's my job is to be your fairy godmother, make it happen, right? So if you want to get a reading with me, you can go to once you listen.com forward slash grace. I'm there. But also join me on Instagram and on Facebook because I am doing like my brother and I really talked about this and I'm like, let's just let's do something different. So come 2020, I want to do a YouTube channel and this information, there's so much, you know, it's like I really want to empower people. I think that's more the direction that I'm going towards. So I know it might seem like gibberish or crazy or like, oh my gosh, but just I promise you, the goal is just to come home to you. That is the oh only thing. I love that. And thank you so much for being here. If you. you have any, any interest, which I know you do because she is absolutely phenomenal. I want you guys to check out the documentary because you will learn everything about this incredible woman who really is just such a bright light in this world and is just going to do amazing things. And I'm really, really excited to see it. So I will be linking um, the website um, where you can uh, be able to connect with her, um, her Insta also. Um, but thank you so much, Gracie Ray. Thank and you. I'm so grateful. You have no idea. Um, and if anyone has any other questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, peace and love and love and light.